Hey guys, Samus the Solid Genie here, aka Mustache Chom, here to review the movie Digimon Coexistence, the next step in Digimon Adventure Try. I believe this is the fifth movie in the set of movies that have come out uh, for Digimon Try. So, I will be reviewing this movie with spoilers intended. And since I am a big fan of Digimon, I will try to do my best to le leave out any biased opinions and say what was good and bad about the movie. So, with that being said, before I officially begin my review, I'll say this nice and early just in case. If you like this review, please feel free to link go to the link in the description and you'll head over to my Patreon and you can donate anything you wish. It'll help me greatly, and yeah. So there's that. Anyways, getting into the actual review of Digimon Tri Coexistence. So the movie starts off pretty abruptly, right where the last one left off, with this evil fake Jedi uh, threatening to essentially kill Maiko. Now, and it, there is an immediate flaw here, is if you haven't seen the previous movies, you'll have no clue what the heck is going on, of course. On the other hand, it does raise the stakes pretty quickly, at least in that respect. So, it has its advantages and disadvantages pretty early on in the movie. So anyways, we see these flashbacks of Maiko uh, taking care of uh, her Digimon... Uh, Maikomon, uh, and essentially her descent into this sort of evil form, more or less, more of that stuff, that we've sort of seen a few instances in some of the other uh, movies, or at least the previous one at the very least. And Jedi is like, oh, this evil Jedi is like, oh, I can't wait for, I, I didn't want her to exist, but... I'm actually kind of glad that she she was quote unquote born, whatever that means. So, anyways, uh, we see the um, these Digimon are now f being able to fly into the real world, and uh, Maiko's uh, Digimon goes into the real world as well, or is attempting to at this point, I believe, um, and. Ty has to go up up to help uh, Maiko in her situation. Um, I wrote in my notes the spy lady, who have you seen in the previous movies, um, she was looking for this Digimon named Tapermon. Uh, this is her Digimon when she was a younger kid. We see these in little flashbacks in this. I believe they covered it a little bit in the previous uh, thing as well. Meanwhile, uh, the news is covering the Digimon's resurgence into the human world. Machines are going nuts. Um, I believe the spy girl's name was Yagami. If that's what my notes have, so that's what I'm saying. Uh, she's going a little bit crazy as she's searching for Tapermon. Um, we see that... Uh, the this sort of worry come over a few of the characters and we see this flashback of um Michael's um father explaining uh what was going on with uh Michael Mon to the uh the spy dude uh, whose name I probably wrote a little bit later on but anyways we see that Hackmon was listening into their uh conversation and we've seen him in previous films very sort of sneaking about here and there. He finally made his presence known to the humans, and apparently he's been talking to some humans um, in order to get them to do the right thing, according to him, to a attack Michaelmon and end this once and for all. So the Digidistant, while they're traveling, are attacked by Jomon and Spidermon. I believe in this case they're still in the, the digital world at this point in time. Um, so they're falling down these cliffs are just appearing out of nowhere. Um, and Kairi suddenly says, oh, the Digimon are seeing us as a nuisance as, and um, this sort of 
brings up this whole, like, oh, the Digimon are, you know, tired of seeing humans appear, uh, at least with reason, it within this sort of reboot that was sort of uh, referenced in one of the previous movies. And now Mayuko, Mako feels responsible, um, and this this whole her feeling down on herself really takes a whole chunk of the movie. Um, she's like feeling down on herself at this point, and Mimi's trying to cheer her up, and then Ty attempts to do it. Um, he gets a little bit uh, he get he's a little bit more successful. Um, and I, there's one line I really liked, and that's that. People who are lonely grow thorns. I really like that line. And, you know, this whole friendship makes you stronger bit. But I really like that line of how loneliness makes you grow thorns. I really like that. That was a really... I never heard that line before. So I really... I thought I'd mention it here uh, in this review. Anyways, now all the rest of the tamers are trying to cheer up. And again, that takes up a big chunk of time. But it it, it is necessary. For her to progress. So anyways, Hakuman is um, continuing with the, his plans to destroy uh, Mikeoman. And um, we see that the Digimon are now destroying this power plant. So it, it, it's a really quick cut. And then we cut back to um, the, the rest of the Digidist and as it's raining. And they're just like sort of relaxing. So Izzy explains that... Um, the Digimon are seeing them as the virus, that they are the things that need to go at this point in time. But before anything else can happen, once the weather clears, they get sucked into this portal. And I believe, because of what the next cut shows, it's that, that evil Geno that sets them through back into the human world. Um, so, this is, I think, the first time, at least in a long time, that other humans that are outside of um, the Digi-Justin group were seeing the Digimon right then and there and then the police are like hey you kids got evil Digimons you gotta you gotta get a, give them to us and then the Digimon hop into the laptop and then the kids run for it they're placed in this room with that spy guy uh, I wrote yeah of course my notes say it way super later Nishijima uh, gets them out the spy dude that being uh, at this point, Maiko once again feels down, and it, at the, the second time, it's a, it feels a little bit more like, okay, we get it, kind of get past this part. So they're trying to cheer her up, and the Digimon are, like, just eating. And the TK decides to kill some time in the movie. This is probably the, the low point of the movie, is that he's telling, or attempting to tell scary stories. And the Digimon and, um... You know, they're all participating. Um, Joe comes up first. He fails almost immediately. Uh, and then TK is about to start his story. And then um, the Digimon want to hear uh, Michael's story. Uh, so we get these really freaky shots of the Digimon being freaked out of her story. Um, and then they all get scared, except for, with the exception of Agumon, who's just eating... Uh, because he's always hungry, because that's one of his character traits or something, I don't know. Anyways, uh, the Digidistant decide that they're going to call their parents because they figured, oh man, we haven't actually done that, because they were, the media has been like all over them ever since the appearance of their Digimon, so the media wanted to talk to them, so they got to the school where no one was. And we get to, again, another down point for... Um, Maiko, she's at her lowest, or very close to her lowest point, and Tai talks to her alone, and then he gets, he kind of gets upset at her, like, you kind of been sulking throughout this movie, come on, get, get a grip, he kind of yells at her for, and he almost, like, immediately regrets it, but then leaves, and then Agumon comes, and Agumon explains how he was fearless, and, um, how, um, Maikomon's still her friend, and so on and so forth. And that's able to get uh, Mai to uh, snap out of it once more. So anyways, Agumon visits Tai and tells him about the situation. And tells him what, 
you know, do what you want to do in order to solve the solution for once. Um, so we cut to the Digimon finally digivolving, and we hear that the fear is increasing um, Mikomon's powers. And suddenly Chessmon appears, and for those of you who don't know, Hackmon digivolves into Chessmon. They don't really show that bit, but just for those who are not in the know, now you know. Uh, so anyways, Maiko, uh, sorry, Maikomon, Maikomon, sorry, uh, digivolves again. So she's in this form you see on the poster there, um, at this point in time, uh, so now, uh, of course, uh, War Greymon is up, and yeah, everyone else is evolving. And we see that Kyrie gets taken over again by whatever it, it might have been Jenna, the evil Jenna that did it, uh, took over her, trying to talk the Digigestant out of the situation. Um, and I'll say th at this point in time, um, this series has done a really good job of making the villain someone you don't want to be the villain at the f in the first place. You know, it's um, her Digimon. And I thought that was really good. And I thought they've been building up on that really steadily throughout the films. Um, within this film, of course, it's reaching its... Like, it's like... Um, Mai is just giving up on everything and almost giving up on her Digimon as well at this point because it, it it's just getting worse and worse at this point. So anyways, uh, getting back to the recap, um, you know, real, the real Kairi talks to the fake one and then um, we do see a little glimpse of Jenna, which is what made me assume that he was the one controlling uh, Kairi at that point. Um, so Chessmon is grabbing Maikomon and almost um, pulls uh, her through the portal. And at that point in time, Omnimon uh, is, you know, gets up and the rest of the chambers give chase through the portal. Um, Nijisama, the spy guy. Uh, remembers all of a sudden that he also had a Digimon, a Bearmon, or a, uh, I don't remember the Japanese mon, the name, so I'll just call him Bearmon. Um, anyways, uh, as those two are fighting, Alphamon appears through the, this other portal, and now he's going after both Chessmon and Omnimon. Um, and while that's going on, we cut to the spy girl, um, to, I have the notes on my thing are way too low, I can't see what her name was again, I should have kept writing her name, but anyway, she gets surrounded by what appears to be a bunch of evil spirit Digimon, or just evil spirits, whatever, which, um, then she gets, like, sucked into the water, it's weird, um, so while that's cutting going on there is this four-way battle between Mikomon, Omnimon, Chessmon, and now Alphamon. Um, and it kind of cradles into this position of um, Mikomon and Omnimon and then Chessmon and Alphamon are fighting kind of like that. Uh, so Omnimon's like pressuring uh, Mikomon and Chessmon does this like laser move but is like cut off. Um, we see that spy dude, um, Nishijima, uh, barely saved Tai from this destructive blast, and he gets, like, separated from Matt and, um, Mai, who gets separated on this, like, split path. And, interestingly enough, they have this whole, like, fake death, or, I'll, I'll just say death scene, or fake death out scene, depending on how you want to view it at this point in time because of how the movie ends. Uh, for the sake of argument, I'll say fake death scene for now. Um, for obvious reasons, but... Anyways, Kari uh, um, now ha all of a sudden has this like purple data f overflowing her with her. Um, you know, she's like, oh, my brother, no! And then she like goes into this weird state, and that allows her Digimon to digivolve to the one you see to the right on the poster. Um, 
and I believe this is some sort of dark version of Ophanimon. Um, I don't recall her having this huge ass scythe, but she does. Uh, so anyways, um, whatever Digimon that is, uh, she like sucks in uh, Mayakomon and then they start like fusing and they create this weird Digimon hybrid thing with like this white creature with like big big wings and like it gets sucked into the portal and after that they're looking around of the situation uh and then we see matt come out he like grabs ty's goggles and then he, he joins the rest of the group because he's the one who's like getting everyone's spirits back at this point in time and he puts the goggles on and that is the end of this movie that has got to be the craziest ending of like wait you never brought ty back um really um he was the main character, and that fake death never got resolved, so that's kind of bizarre, <laughs> to say the very least. Um, yeah, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, there are a few f movies left. I, I think this is the fifth installment of movies, and I believe they planned for, like... I, I don't know, like six or seven or eight. I don't know how many they were planning, but um, clearly by the end of this movie, I think it's very clear that this is not the end uh, of the adventure. We saw a bunch of evil Digimon like roaming around the streets. Um, we saw that evil fused Digimon um, just like appearing somewhere else uh, and getting ready to cause further destruction. And now we see that Matt has is officially leading the Digidestined as like well, I mean, him and Ty are constantly fighting over for who's leader, but now it feels as if they're trying to really push the idea that Matt has become, like, the V leader of the Digidistant, at least for now. So, that it was, uh, Digimon Tri Coexistence, and it was a pretty solid movie. It does drag a little bit here and there with the whole my being down bit, and I do understand what they are going for. Uh, just trying to build up on it and build up on it. Making her final decisions make a little bit more sense where she's like, you know what, just kill me. Um, because that's where it got down to. Like, she was really that down on herself. She was like, I'm just that done with it. Um, with this whole, my Digimon is evil and there, it feels like there's nothing I can do about it because the Digimon in question has no control. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, other than that, the only other issue I would say is that intro does heavily rely on watching all the previous movies. So there is that much to caution to going into this movie. But I did watch the previous movies, so at least I know what was going on from that perspective. But I do fear that a newcomer, for whatever reason, just jumping into this film will have no clue what's going on, obviously. Um, but, as this movie stands, I still think it's a solid movie, even if as a s standalone solid movie. I would still give it a solid 7 out of 10. I, w I was really close to giving it an 8 out of 10. Um, but, it, like I said, it I think it does have too heavily rely on its prequels, uh, at least for that beginning part. Um, and it does drag just a little bit too long on those parts. We kind of, I think they could have cut one of them out. I think the first one actually, the, that initial one, and they could have kept like the later ones, and that would have helped uh, build up it still properly enough and have it feel like that's enough uh, amount of time. So, that is my review of Digimon Tri Coexistence, and if you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, or as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, head over to that Patreon and please feel free to uh, go to the link and then give a little donation here, so that'll really help a lot, and I'll really appreciate any of those things. And until next time, everyone, bye!